What's going on guys? Welcome back to Trafish Aquatics. Today we're going to be talking about choosing your first aquarium size, all the equipment you need, and everything to get started in the aquarium keeping hobby. Alright guys, so if you haven't already gone and watched the pre-planning your first aquarium video, go ahead and go watch that. Link is in the description down below and then come back to this video. This video is going to be talking about choosing your aquarium and all the equipment you need to get yourself started and rolling in the aquarium hobby. Now one thing you're going to notice is when you go to a store looking for a tank, you can either buy the tank itself or you can buy a starter kit. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, the tanks themselves generally you can get a lot of them if you're in the united states at dollar per gallon sales usually these run the 10 gallon tanks 20 gallon tanks 29 gallon tanks and then usually it's a discount on the 40 breeders and 55 gallons um, and i believe they include the 75 and the discounted prices as well so those are going to be the main tanks that we talk about because most of those are also sold as starter kits so buying the tank outright not on sale you're going to be better off probably purchasing a starter kit because you're going to be able to get other equipment that's needed in with that as well and it's going to cost almost the same amount as just buying a tank outright. So some of the tanks I'm going to talk about now, like I said, they both come in the starter kits and tanks by themselves. So I'm going to talk about them, talk about the size and um, talk about what you can keep in there um, and which one I think is the best tank to get yourself into the hobby with. So the first tank we're going to talk about is the five and a half gallon aquarium. Now these seem uh, very appealing to a lot of new hobbyists because they're not very big. They're a small aquarium. You can put them on a desk, on a counter, you can put them on an end table or a nightstand uh, in your bedroom and they're very very appealing. The problem is they are a very small tank and arguably that is the bare minimum tank for a Betta. A single male or female betta, a 5.5 gallon, is going to be the tank uh, bare minimum size for that. And that's all you're really going to be able to keep in there. Um, aside from bettas, you could probably do a small colony of shrimp, snails, things like that. Um, but generally, you're not going to be able to get a lot of fish in those um, because of the size. right? Uh, also, the tank being smaller, it's going to be a little harder to maintain water parameters in a smaller volume of water as opposed to a larger volume of water. It's going to be a little bit easier to maintain those water parameters. The next size up is going to be a 10 gallon tank. Um, you're going to be somewhat limited on fish, but you can also now start adding schools of nano fish. So celestial pearl danios uh, and fish like that, something that's going to stay small, about one inch. Uh, neon tetras, you could do some guppies and things like that. Um, but I wouldn't start getting into fish that get to three to four inches. Um, smaller fish are definitely going to be more user friendly in a tank that size. Uh, the next tank up from that is going to be your 20 gallon high and 20 gallon long tanks. Now these tanks are really good for beginners um, and are a good choice uh, when you first get into the hobby. Um, now the one thing is with 20 gallon tanks you have to realize that a lot of people are going to buy these because they're not very big and they're going to try and do the same thing that they do with a 10 and a five and a half gallon put them on a nightstand or on a desk or something like that and you have to realize that when an aquarium is full of water and gravel and stuff like that you're looking at about 10 pounds per gallon so you really have to think about what you're putting it on because 200 pounds on a small end table if it's not built to handle that kind of weight uh, could collapse and water on your floor is not something you want to live with because I've been there and it sucks. So make sure when you're getting a 20 gallon you're either putting it on something that's very sturdy or you could potentially go out and purchase a special stand specifically for that size of aquarium. Uh, now you've got the 20 high and the 20 long. The 20 high is um, 24 inches wide and 18 inches tall and the 20 long is I believe 36 no, 30 inches wide. This is a 20 long up here, and this is a 20 high, uh, 20 high right here. It's 30 inches wide and 12 inches tall. So those are the differences there. One's a little bit longer, one's a little bit taller. Um, the next tank up from that would be the 29 gallon. And in my opinion, the 29 gallon tank is the best starter tank for somebody who wants to get into the hobby because of its size. 
right? So you, you're essentially combining the 20 long and the 20 high. You're getting the length of the 20 long and the height of the 20 high on a 29 gallon tank. And when you get this tank set up, it's the best option uh, as far as getting into uh, more fish in an aquarium. You can have a small community. I have a small community over here uh, with some skirt tetras. I've got some coolie loaches. I've got neon tetras. I have some platies in there. Uh, I have a nice large group of snails and I've got live plants in there um, and it looks really nice right and with the smaller tanks in my opinion you get those you're gonna get them set up and you're gonna go wow I wish I had a bigger tank and a 29 gallon you don't really get that as much because you already feel like you have a big aquarium a 29 is a good size you're definitely gonna need to stand for it um, so either build one or buy one but in my opinion, that personally is my ideal go-to starter size. If somebody asks, hey, what size tank should I get? 29 is what I'm gonna point them to. The next tank up from there is gonna be the 40 breeder. Now, the 40 breeder is nice because instead of having the 12 and a half inch front to back depth like all these other tanks do, uh, when I say all the other tanks, I'm talking the 20s and the 29. Uh, the 10s and five and a halves are a little bit narrower front to back. But instead of being 12 and a half, you're now getting 18 inches on the 40 breeder front to back. So it's deeper than the previous tanks. Um, you can start keeping medium sized cichlids in there. So you got your uh, Mabunas and Peacocks. You can keep a small school of those in there. Maybe like six to eight of them, maybe, depending on your filtration. Um, and you can keep large schools of smaller fish. So if you want a big school of uh, skirt tetras or something like that, 40 breeders going to be the way to go for that. The issue with 40 breeders is sometimes, depending on where you live, it's harder to find lids and stands for these because of the specific dimensions of the tank. You got 36 inches by 18. The footprint is really nice for fish keeping, but it's hard to find equipment to match it. The next tank up from there is going to be the 55 gallon. And what's nice about the 55 gallon is it's the first four foot tank. Now when you have a new hobbyist getting into the hobby and they look at a 55, they're gonna go, that tank is enormous. And to most of us experienced fish keepers, it's an okay tank size. A lot of people don't really like it because it's only 12 and a half inches front to back. Personally, I have six 55 gallon aquariums. I like them, one, because they're cheap and you can find a lot of them and they hold a lot of water. And personally, I like that, um, so that's just what I roll with. So I got my 55s, and this is the largest aquarium that you're going to find in the starter kit section, right? So all of the aquariums I've talked about so far, you can buy the tank solely on its own, or you can buy it in a starter kit. Um, so I'm gonna talk about starter kits a little bit later here, um, but for right now, the last tank I'm gonna talk about is the 75 gallon, which is another four foot tank. Same size as a 55, but instead of having that 12 and a half inches front to back, you now have 18 like the 40 breeder was. So it's a little bit deeper, you get a better footprint. It's better if you wanna keep large schools of cichlids and things like that, a 75 works out really well. Or if you wanna keep goldfish, right? Like big fancy goldfish, like these guys right here. These guys are in a 55, but personally, if I was to make the choice, I would put them in a 75 gallon aquarium. You're gonna have that extra depth front to back and it's gonna give them a little bit more swimming room. So 75s are really nice. They don't come in starter kits and they're a little bit more expensive. But those are all the tanks that I would recommend for beginners, right? Um, anything up from a 20 gallon, make sure you get a stand. And personally, I would recommend the 29 gallon aquarium to you guys. In my opinion, that's the best option and it's gonna make you feel like you don't have to upgrade right away. So now that I've talked about tank sizes, um, we're gonna talk about all the equipment that you need to purchase along with your tank so that you're fully prepared and ready to get your tank cycled and ready for fish. All right guys, so any prior research that you've done, if you watch my last video, is gonna help you determine what size tank you want based on what kind of fish that you guys wanna keep. If you wanna keep a school of fish, if you wanna keep big cichlids, if you wanna keep whatever you wanna keep, right you want to match the tank size to the fish to give those fish the best quality of life so at this point what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to determine if you want to get a starter kit to help you get started or if you just want to piece together your own uh, your own system 
right? Now, a starter kit does not give you everything that you need. I want to just say that right up front. So sometimes it's better to piece together your own system because you get exactly what you want as opposed to buying a starter kit and then wanting to upgrade in the future. But if you're just looking to get your feet wet and get into the hobby, starter kits are a good place to start. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about some items here that come in the starter kits um, that will help you get started or if you want to purchase them individually. These are just the items that come in the kits themselves. So the first thing is going to be the tank itself. Right? Choose one you like, choose a size you like, and match it to the fish you want to keep. It's pretty simple. I already talked about the different size tanks that I like to use and come in these kits. So go ahead and select one based on what kind of fish you want to keep. Uh, the lid for the aquarium. If you're getting the kit, the lid comes with the light already built right into it in the kit. No big deal. If you're buying everything individually, you're going to need to buy these individually. So I would recommend if you're just setting up one aquarium, go ahead and buy one of the glass lids that they have set up at the aquarium store, at the, your local fish store. Buy a glass lid, put it on there. If you're setting up a whole bunch of tanks, get yourself a sheet of polycarbonate and go ahead and cut that up and make lids for yourself. It's going to end up being cheaper than buying glass lids for every aquarium. As far as lighting, um, if you go on Amazon and look up the Aquanite or the Nycru lights, those lights work perfectly fine for the smaller tanks and growing plants. This tank here has a Nycru light on it. That one has an Aquion. This tank down here has a uh, under cabinet LED light that's sold at Walmart. You don't necessarily have to run um, aquarium specific lighting to get good lighting on an aquarium. For example, this tank right here with the Red Devil runs a LED shop light. So you don't have to purchase LED lighting specifically for an aquarium. You can if you want to. They are usually better quality. But if you're looking to grow live plants and stuff like that, I grow them with these weird lights, the LED shop lights and the under cabinet lights. Grow plants perfectly fine. You don't necessarily need to get an aquarium specific lighting if you want to grow plants. Just keep that in mind. Um, the next thing is going to be your filter. So usually these starter kits are going to come with a hang on back filter of some kind that matches the brand of the starter kit, whether it's an Aquion or a Top Fin or a Marine Land, whatever, it's going to come with a hang on back. That's just what they put in there. It's whatever uh, tank size you chose, they're going to match it to their um, hang on back that matches that size of tank. It's going to work fine. You can always upgrade later if you want to, but it will work, especially if you upgrade that filter with some sponge. If you want to see that video, link down in the description. I highly recommend it, especially if you're going to be getting a starter kit. Um, if you're not getting a starter kit, you have the option of sponge filtration, hang on backs, canister filters, sumps, whatever you want to do. You know, it's totally up to you. Um, but all of those kinds of filtration work perfectly fine in my experience. Now, that is all that the starter kit is going to have. It's going to have your tank, lid, light, and filtration, right? So that's just getting you in, just getting your feet wet. There's still a lot of stuff that you're going to need that the starter kit doesn't come with. So we'll get into that now. So the first thing you're going to need outside of the starter kit is a heater. All of the fish, not all, 90% of the fish that we keep in the aquarium hobby are going to be tropical fish that prefer water temperatures that are warmer than our normal ambient room temperature. So on average, we like to keep our room temperature anywhere between 65 and 70 in our homes. You know, some people are gonna like it warmer, some are gonna like it cooler, that's an average. So based on that, we're gonna need a heater to get our aquariums up to 78 to 80 degrees in that range, depending on what kind of fish you want. Um, some fish like it warmer, discus like 85, 86 degrees, right? Some fish are gonna like it colder, white cloud mountain minnows, 70 degrees and below you know it, it all depends on what kind of fish you want so do a little bit of research on that and get a heater to match the aquarium so five watts per gallon to get yourself 10 degrees over ambient room temperature so just use that as a basic rule and get yourself a heater the next thing you're going to want to look at is your substrate do you want gravel substrate or sand if you want any kind of colored gravel go ahead you can grow plants in that perfectly fine right if you want live plants, not a big deal for gravel. Sand, some sands are gonna be a little inhibitive on plant growth. If it's too fine, it'll compact root feeding plants and it'll starve them out. But 
uh, water column feeding plants, perfectly fine. Uh, you can get black diamond blasting sand, play sand, pool filter sand, or you can buy the sand that's sold at the fish stores. All of it is going to work very well. Um, I have videos on sand, so if you want to check that out, and there's tons of other videos on YouTube, but if you want to check those videos out on sand, go ahead and check that out. I use a lot of black diamond blasting sand, that's this right here, and I have never had problems with growing plants in that, if you want to do live plants. Speaking of plants and stuff, plants and decor, right? If you want to do fake plants, fake stone, fake logs, fake driftwood and things like that, perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. If you want to do live plants with driftwood and stone, it's going to be a little bit more expensive because you're going to have to start buying fertilizers unless the substrate you choose is a pre-fertilized substrate. But again, that only really works for root feeding plants. You're still going to have to get the liquid fertilizers to dose water columns. So if you want to do live plants, do some research on that. Uh, before you go setting up the aquarium to make sure you have everything that you need. Next thing, probably the most important thing to have as an aquarium uh, hobbyist, is the test kit. You need to be able to test your water and test your water parameters to make sure that they match what your fish needs. Um, the API Master Test Kit is what I use, that's what most hobbyists use, and it is by far the most accurate out of the store available test kits. There are other ones that are more accurate and more consistent, but if you want a good one to hit the ground running, the API Master Test Kit is probably one of the better ones to get for a beginning hobbyist. Um, water conditioner, uh, Prime. I actually have some right here. If you live in the city and you have chlorine or chloramine in your tap water, you're gonna need Prime. Right? or some kind of water conditioner to eliminate that. Remove the chlorine, remove the chlorine, uh, neutralize heavy metals, neutralize ammonia, things like that. Prime is an excellent, excellent tool in the aquarium hobby. I have well water, I don't have chlorine or chloramine or anything like that, and I still have Prime in case of emergencies. Um, water conditioner is very, very important to have around, even if you don't need it on an everyday basis. Very important. Um, Next thing to think about, water changes, right? How are you gonna do your water changes? Are you just gonna do it with a regular siphon, a hose, and a bucket? Or are you going to be purchasing a water changing system like the Python or the Aquion water changing system? Uh, we have to do water changes as a source of nutrient export for nitrate in the aquarium. So make sure you know how you're gonna be changing your water to keep your fish healthy and happy. Fish food. You have to make sure that you have fish food before you get fish because you don't want to be able to not feed them when you get them home, right? So make sure that you do the research based on your fish's needs um, and see if there's any special dietary requirements. Um, but make sure you get the fish food specifically suited for the fish that you need and research dietary supplementation for the fish that you want to get. And a couple things that a lot of people overlook when they first get their aquarium, um, a net. A net is very important to have because if you have to get your fish out of the aquarium for any reason, or if you need to move them to another tank, or whatever reason you would need a net, if you don't have one, that job becomes near impossible to remove those fish without a net. Make sure you pick up a net. They're like two, three dollars to get a net. Super cheap, make sure you have one. Next most important thing, power strip. A lot of people go and get all these tanks and all of this electronics equipment. You got your light, you've got your filter, you've got your heater. Generally, when you put your aquarium up against the wall, you put it next to an outlet, right? And most outlets only come with two plugs. Well, just between that, the light, the filter, and the heater, you already have three. So you're gonna need a power strip Preferably with an inline breaker, one that's built right into the power strip in case something happens, it'll trip the breaker there before it trips the one in your home. Um, get one of those, hook everything up on there, and you'll be good to go. Now, this last one, you don't have to have it, but in my opinion, it's better to have it if you want to get more enjoyment out of your aquarium, and that is a background. Generally speaking, the ones that have the plants on them, or the stones, or a decorative background you're going to lose the fish in the background you're not going to see them as much because they're going to blend in uh, personally for me I prefer black backgrounds they're going to make the colors of the fish really stand out and really pop um, that way 
you get better visibility on them and it's easier to see and it's gonna make everything look a lot nicer. So that is basically everything that you're gonna need to get yourself into the hobby, get your feet wet, and get started in the aquarium. I'll go ahead and do a quick rundown again of everything you're gonna need. Uh, tank, stand, light, lids, filter, heater, substrate, plants and decor, test kit, water conditioner, a way to do water changes, you're gonna need fish food, you're gonna need a net, you're gonna need a power strip and a background if you want it. So those are the things that you're gonna need to get in the hobby and get your feet wet and get started with your first aquarium. So that's basically it for this video, guys. The next video is gonna be setting up your first aquarium. I'm gonna walk you guys through it and everything you need to do so that way you guys can be successful keeping your fish the first time you do it. So thank you guys for watching Trap Fish Aquatics. If you guys like any of the products that you see me use in any of my videos or products I use in my fish room, links as always in the description down below. Thank you guys for watching Trap Fish Aquatics, and I will see you guys in the next video.